Hello. You are. You feel so solid. You know this is really nice touch. Hello everybody. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing Gamo 2's Divala controller. This controller is meant for Project Diva and basically the Vocaloid games. Before we start the video, I want to give some disclaimers. One, I'm not paid to make this video. They only sent me this controller for free as a review unit, so yeah. And two, I have no point of reference in this review. I cannot compare this to any other controller for Project Diva because I don't own any of them. This includes the latest limited run of the Project Diva Mega Mix controller, which is the only Hori controller that includes the touch panel or looks like the arcade. I also cannot compare this to the arcade cabinet because there are no Project Diva arcade cabinets in Singapore anymore. They used to be a year ago but they were all removed and taken offline. I only can base this off my memory of how the arcade was like when the arcade machines were still around or when I went to Japan. Now that's out of the way, let's talk about the hardware of the controller. So this controller is $439, that is very pricey. This is a controller that is meant for people who are very hardcore and into the game. Gamoto makes premium controllers, they are meant to be arcade replicas and the parts they use are very expensive and their manufacturing quality is very very high. So I don't recommend this controller for anyone who's a casual or just getting into Project Diva, unless you're really looking for the arcade experience. The buttons themselves on the Project Diva controller on default uses Chinese buttons. It uses 1N Omron switches and 160 gram springs. Which is really strange because uh, I thought they would just use 200 gram springs and I thought that at first until I took the controller apart and realized that there were two springs within one button and that's when I realized that they were stacking springs that were of different weight from each other. The interesting thing about this controller is that the extra function buttons around the controller that you see in red, they are not arcade switches or buttons at all, they are actually keyboard buttons. They use the red switches and they actually feel kinda nice and I like this design choice, it made it feel pretty interesting and it's quite new. The extra yellow button at the side is another function key but this function key is for you to change modes or the lighting controls. It looks like it uses those arcade fight stick buttons and there's not much I can talk about it, the Gamo 2 website doesn't talk much about this button at all. It seems that Gamo 2 has really outdone themselves with this controller because the entire body of the controller is made of metal and it feels very 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 solid and premium. Especially compared to their previous products like the Phoenix one. The Phoenix one uses a plastic casing and their SVR9 still uses a really gross acrylic box. The controller has a headphone jack in the front for you to use your headphones if you want to uh, at, when you're playing on PC or PS4 or PS3. The headphone jack does not work on Nintendo Switch because the Nintendo Switch does not support that. The back of the controller has a USB-B port and a USB Type-C port. The USB-B port is meant for the data connections and basically being the controller and the USB Type-C port is meant for the lighting on the buttons. It's a thing in Gamo 2 where they use two separate cables for the controller so take note if you're running out of USB port space. Because they're using two separate cables, it means that the lighting on their controller is very bright. They are crazy bright, like very very bright. Like I do not recommend anyone who prefers not distracting controllers to like have this because they're crazy bright. They're like insanely bright. They're like the sun. The controller is 69.6 cm long. It's by far the longest controller I've ever owned. It's even longer than the SVRE9. Its width is 24 cm, which is probably the shortest controller I've owned in the width. And its height is 12 cm, which is pretty standard. All controllers around this height nowadays. And its weight comes at the heaviest controller I've owned. Probably because of the fact that the entire body is made of metal. It's sitting at 9.2 kg. It is very, very heavy. Now let's talk about the software aspects of this controller. This controller supports PS3, PS4, Nintendo Switch, and PC. It works on all these Project Diva games, and I think Gamotu ran out of things to talk about in this list, so they started adding games where it could work. But, but, but why? Why will you use this on Osu? Why? And that's it for how the controller is. It looks very nice, very solid. And by the way, the touch panel uses acrylic on the top. It doesn't feel exactly the same as the arcade, but it's quite similar and it works. Alright, now for how the controller plays. The controller is very loud. It is a very loud controller. I do not recommend this to anyone who needs to be quiet. Just for comparison, here's the sound test.
Yeah, so uh, they are playing behind me and you can kind of hear how loud it is. No, it's okay. This is supposed to be in the video. It's demonstrating how loud it is. Alright, now time to talk about how the controller plays. Just a warning, I only tried this on my PC and my sister's Nintendo Switch. I don't own a PS3 or a PS4, so I couldn't test it on the other Vocaloid games. One thing I noticed right off the bat was that the buttons stick. They stick a lot. Here's a clip from my Twitch explaining what it's like. This controller, the thing about it is that the buttons get stuck very easily. Like, uh, look at this. It's, it's held down. So this game has a lot of hold notes. So it can get stuck very easy and the thing about Project Device is that a lot of it is pressing down this button like this. So and then it's also it also has a lot of holes. So if you're doing this and then it's stuck and then you try to press again, you know, that's a problem. I asked Dao about the button sticking and he said even on Sanwa's the buttons still stick. And he sent me a guide to my email on how to make the buttons not stick. But I looked through the guide and it was basically a guide on how to take apart the buttons. They, it doesn't really tell you how to make them not stick. So what I did was take the controller apart and try using car engine oil on the buttons. And it kind of worked. After that, my buttons completely stopped sticking. God bless car engine oil. Also while taking the controller apart, I noticed that you can change the artwork on the controller. They do say on the website that you can change the artwork on the controller by taking it apart. You also can change the artwork on the touch slider if you want to. Which is pretty cool. I'll probably print out my own design on this later on. I'll probably print something that looks like the arcade. <laughs> I also noticed another problem on the Nintendo Switch, where basically the buttons double press. So in Project Eva, there's a lot of hold notes, where you hold on a button and then you have to keep pressing the rest of the buttons. I noticed that when you hold on X right and press triangle, it will double press. I told this to a friend and he said that it was actually just a DS4 problem or something. I'm not sure whether this is a controller or it's because it's on the Switch or it happens on the PS4 either. Basically according to my friend, he said that uh, that game consoles have an inbuilt thing where basically you cannot press buttons that are far apart from each other at the same time and it causes the inputs to spaz out basically. I don't know if it's the developer causing this or if it's my system. And that could explain why it doesn't happen on PC. Otherwise the controller works really nice actually. Like, it's great for the jacks and personally I wish the springs were heavier but I can always change them and other than that it's really loud. The touch panel works fantastic and uh, well not all gestures work, they, they rewrote it in the guide themselves that how to use the touch panel and stuff. All in all I'm quite impressed with the controller, the problems aside. I really like the lights, the build quality is amazing and it really makes me look forward to their next controller which is the Chiritum controller. I really can't wait for them to release the Chiritum controller. Do I recommend this controller? Well, uh, it's kind of hard to recommend this when it's so expensive. I mean, for anyone out there who really wants arcade experience, I definitely recommend it. I mean, it's not like there's anywhere else to buy the controller from anyway. Uh, the Hori controller that looks like the arcade, that one, it's a limited run only. Basically a collector's item. The only place where you can get a Project Diva controller is the Divaler. And Gamutu won't go out of stock for this one, it's not a limited run. Uh, so yeah, and that's uh, basically some summary review. And uh, now it's time for some gameplay footage. And by the way, just a fair warning, I'm not very good at Project Diva, so forgive my bad playing.